Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over two examples using the kinematic equations for one-dimensional horizontal motion. And in this video, both examples will be solving for the final velocity. The first problem, Susie's riding her bicycle on the street with a speed of 8.7 meters per second. Suddenly, she is being chased by Chompers the dog. She needs to get away, so she accelerates <coughs> at a rate of 1.5 meters per second squared for 10 seconds, and we want to know what is her final velocity. Now, we're going to be using our kinematic equations, and in the kinematic equations, there are five different variables. The first thing I think that you should do is write down all five of those variables. They are the initial velocity, the final velocity, the change in position, the distance or the displacement is delta x, the acceleration, and the time. Just write all five of them down. Write down now what you've been given and what you're trying to solve for. We are given that the speed is 8.7 meters per second before she starts to accelerate. So that is her initial speed or her initial velocity. We're given the acceleration. We're given the time. And we're trying to solve for the final velocity. We're not given the change in position at distance. So we're not going to be able to use it. We're not solving for it. So we can just ignore that for now. Now, we know... As you know, in the kinematic equations, each equation has four variables in it. You're given three, you can solve for the fourth. So get out your kinematic equations. Each one has four variables. You're given three, you have to find the equation where you can solve for the fourth. And the way you do that is this. You need an equation, of course, that has the final velocity in it. Then it also has to have the other three variables that you know. So let's just start at the very beginning. The first equation, it does have the final velocity, so that's possibility, but we need to know the other three variables. I like to just go back to the beginning. Do we know delta x? No, we don't know delta x. So we cannot use this equation to solve for the final velocity. Now we need to go on and check the second equation. Once again, this equation has the final velocity in it. It's actually solved for the final velocity, and we have to know the other three variables. Do we know the initial velocity? Yes. Do we know the acceleration? Yes. Do we know the time? Yes. Therefore, we can use this equation. Now, sometimes there's more equation, more than one equation we can use. I just like to check the other two for the heck of it. Now, you'll notice right away, this one doesn't have final velocity in it, so we cannot use this equation. This one has final velocity, but it also has delta x. We don't know delta x, so we can't use this equation. So let's go to the next slide, take our information and our equation with us. It's nicely solved already for the final velocity. It's equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. Simply plug the numbers in. 8.7 plus 1.5 times 10 gives us that. Susie's final velocity after being chased by Chompers the dog is 23.7 meters per second. All right, that's all there is to it. Let's do the next one. Now we have Johnny go fast. He's at the start of the race. And he's going to, when he gets ready, he's going to accelerate at 1.5 meters per second squared down the home straightaway. And we want to know what is Johnny's speed at the end of the 200 meter straightaway. Once again, do the first step. Write down all five variables. Initial, final velocity, change in position, acceleration, and time. Fill in what you know and fill in what you don't know. Now, it says at the start of the race. Now, generally, at the start of the race, you're, sitting, you're sitting still in the car there. The car is not moving, has no velocity, so the initial velocity in this case is 0 meters per second. Then we're given the acceleration, and we're given the distance, 200 meters, and we're asked to solve for the final velocity. Now, we're not given the time. We're not going to use the time, so we're going to ignore the time for this problem. Once again, you'll see you're given three variables solving for the fourth. Get out your kinematic equations. We need an equation that's solved for the final velocity and has the other three variables in it. I just like to start at the beginning. Let's see this equation once again has the final velocity, of course. Now you'll notice though, we don't know the time, so we can't use this equation. This equation has the final velocity, but it also has the time. This equation, as we said earlier, doesn't have the final velocity and it also has the time, so we know we cannot use that one. And the final equation, we want to solve for the final velocity. We know the initial is zero. We know the acceleration 
and we know the change in position. This is our equation. Let's bring it to the next page. We have all our values with us. We can simply plug the values in. Before we do that, in this case, we can simplify this equation a little bit because the initial velocity is zero. That means the initial velocity squared is also going to be equal to zero. And now we have that the final velocity squared is equal to 2a delta x. I like to solve the equation for the variable we're solving for first. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And you get that the final velocity is equal to the square root of 2a delta x. Simply plug the values in, the square root of 2 times the acceleration 1.5 times the distance 200, and you get that the final velocity after that acceleration for 200 meters is 45.2 meters per second. Okay, that is the final velocity of Johnny Go Fast. Okay, so there you go. I think that's pretty straightforward. We did two problems. We did them both the same way. First step, write down all five variables. Second step, fill in what you know and what you're trying to solve for. Third step, find the equation you're going to use. Fourth step, plug the values in. Fifth step, answer correct units included. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do all of the following three things. That would be thumbs up, leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below, and then please subscribe to my channel. Get all of my excellent chemistry, physics, and math videos. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.